Max Radio's update with Lewis Foster. Fast am I. Good evening. It's five o'clock on Friday, the 23rd of August, and welcome to your daily roundup of news on and from the Isle of Man today. Coming up in the next half hour, the Isle of Man government responds to a report about an alleged investment scam targeting victims in China. We hear from the clerk of the course on what's been an unprecedented week for the Manx Grand Prix. And what do those in the tourism industry think to a boycott of holiday accommodation in the south of the island? We'll also keep you posted on anything to watch out for travel-wise. And as ever, your thoughts always welcome. You can text 166 or email studio at manxradio.com. First of all, let's have this evening's headlines with Christian Jones. Fast to my. Fast to my. The Isle of Man government says it remains committed to helping identify, disrupt and prevent international criminal activity. It follows the publication of a report by the BBC World Service, which alleges that an investment scam operated from the Isle of Man and cons victims in China out of millions of dollars. The Isle of Man's consumer inflation rate fell by a whole percentage point last month, returning it to the lowest it's been since April 2021. The rate at which prices are rising now stands at 2%. And poor weather forecasts for Sunday means there'll be no racing on the Manx Grand Prix course. Final qualifying and three races take place tomorrow and another three races are scheduled for Monday. In international news now, and the family of a father and daughter who died after a yacht sank off the coast of Sicily on Monday say they're devastated and in shock. British tech tycoon Mike Lynch and 18-year-old Hannah are among seven victims, though formal identification is yet to be completed. Sources say Secret Service agents who are on duty when Donald Trump was shot at have been put on leave. The exact number isn't known and it's also unclear whether an internal investigation has finished. And Royal Mail insists there have been improvements despite missing another target to deliver 93% of first-class mail on time. It managed just under 80% in the first three months to the end of June. Manx Radio News, those are the update news headlines next at 6. Gromayed. Thank you, Christian Jones. Now the weather brought to you by Manx Glass and Glazing. There is a yellow warning in place overnight from 1 o'clock until 5 o'clock in the morning for coastal overtopping. The areas at risk, Shaw Road, Castletown Prom and the north of Douglas Prom. Debris likely to be left in those places. Meanwhile, further sunny intervals this evening and possibly one or two showers with a continuing risk of scattered showers overnight. Fresh to strong southwest winds with the minimum temperature tonight about 13 Celsius. Tomorrow will then be largely dry with good sunny spells and only very isolated showers. Maximum temperature 16 or 17 Celsius with winds soon easing to become mainly moderate from the west. Cloudy on Sunday with outbreaks of rain and drizzle soon developing and strong southwest winds. Sunset tonight just shy of half past eight and sunrise tomorrow morning at 30 minutes past six. Manx Glass and Glazing can supply and install single, double and triple glazing. Call 674 573 or visit the showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. Simply income protection from Kestrel Insurance. A choice of benefits. Simple underwriting and peace of mind with a regular income for up to two years if you're unable to work due to illness or injury. Kestrel Insurance is registered with the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Carpetland, the carpet specialist with the island's best value carpets in stock, often fitted within a week. Furniture Land for three-piece suites, dining and living room furniture and a selection of amazing beds. Carpet Land and Furniture Land, West Street, Ramsey. Manx Mobility in Onken have it all. Daily living aids, wide-fitting shoes, rise recliners, beds and scooters, including lightweight and airline approved models. Call in and see how our expert team can make your life easier. Manx Mobility at the top of Summer Hill. At Bond Fabrics, we're not just a fabric shop. As well as curtains and upholstery, dress and costume fabrics, we've knitting and crocheting walls, made to measure curtain and blind service, plus poles and tracks. Visit Strand Street, Douglas, call 611856 or see bondfabrics.im. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio.
And it's coming up to five past five. Police on the Isle of Man say they can't comment on an alleged global fraud and money laundering investigation because it's ongoing. It follows BBC World Service reports today about an investment scam allegedly carried out from the island, which reportedly conned victims in China out of millions of dollars. News editor Tessa Hawley joins me in the studio now. Tessa, this has been a big story for the BBC today. It has, and I think it's probably important to point out from the outset that this was part of an in-depth investigation by the BBC World Service, and in particular the Global China Unit. This morning, the BBC published its report about an investment scam allegedly carried out from the island. The BBC say that was happening between January 2022 and January 2023. And obviously that is a BBC investigation, so Manx Radio isn't privy to the information the organisation has had. That's right. So obviously with any in-depth probe like this, it's going to have been built from information from multiple sources, documentary evidence, interviews, etc, etc. Now, we as Manx Radio do not have access to any of that information to validate it, which would make it particularly unwise for, for us to repeat any of their claims verbatim. As you also may be aware, there are ongoing proceedings in relation to at least one of the companies mentioned in the BBC report. And quite frankly, we're not going to be reporting anything which may be prejudicial if there are any potential proceedings which could end up before the Isle of Man Courts of Justice. Well, Tessa, what we do know is that an investigation is ongoing. So just remind us of the details of that. So today, the Isle of Man Constabulary has confirmed to Manx Radio that it obviously can't comment on this alleged global fraud investigation because it's still being worked on. However, previously, police have confirmed that they'd executed a number of warrants at business premises on Victoria Road and Bucks Road in Douglas. At that time, 10 people were arrested and released on bail and a number of immigration interviews were also conducted. Police said it was being led by the proactive international money laundering and investigation team in relation to King Gaming Limited Isle of Man. And so what's uh, the Isle of Man government been saying? Well, naturally, when we saw the BBC break this story, we approached the Isle of Man government for a response. Now, 14 hours after that story broke, the government issued a statement saying it has a zero tolerance attitude towards international criminal activity and it remains committed to having a respected international partner in terms of global efforts to identify, disrupt and prevent this happening. It adds maintaining the Isle of Man's international reputation as a trusted and respected jurisdiction is of the utmost importance and the Isle of Man government will not hesitate to act to protect this in the face of those who stand to jeopardise and abuse it. And whilst the various matters are subject to those ongoing criminal investigations, government says it's unable to offer any further comment at this stage, but says significant and wide-reaching action has been taken and that the businesses involved at the centre of these allegations are no longer in operation as a result of the actions taken by government. So that's what governments are saying, but what are people saying, Tessa, about this? Well, as you can imagine, the BBC story has got the public talking today. And like many topical issues, it reached the man in line, with these callers suggesting Timwald needs to be recalled as a matter of priority. I think people are concerned on this island of where this could quickly go. I think wherever our government are in the world at the moment, there needs to be an immediate recall of Timwall because this is a huge embarrassing story for the island. Mm. And if they actually care, they should be back here right now mitigating all this and answering some questions. Yes, we need an immediate recall of Timwall and that has to happen before the end of this month. Callers to the man in line today questioning the need for Timwall to be recalled following a BBC investigation which alleges the Isle of Man has been involved in a global investment scam. We heard from news editor Tessa Hawley just before now. And it's nine past five. Bikes return to the Manx Grand Prix course this afternoon in what has so far proved to be a challenging year in the event's history. There have been all manner of delays, cancellations and changes to the schedule due to the very poor weather conditions we've seen this week. Clerk of the course Gary Thompson told Chris Boyd it's unprecedented. It's been a challenging event with uh, continued challenges to the schedule. And on behalf of AC Events Limited and obviously probably more so on myself really, I just want to thank all the marshals that have signed up to 
support NGP24 so far, especially those who have come forward to support the contentious decisions and obviously those who dealt with the two incidents at Cates last Sunday. And in addition to the marshals, we need to thank, for example, the technical inspection team who have been scrutineering all the bikes for every session, even when those sessions haven't gone on, the timekeeping team, all of your race control team who are up here all day long trying to manage the situation day by day. There's a huge army here, isn't there, that needs to be thanked? It is. Obviously, we're all involved in racing, but the race organisation that supports the Mans Grand Prix and obviously the TT, you know, I couldn't do my job job without them and, and equally no one department or one no one part of the race organization can't do their job without the other so to speak and uh, again it's a it's a big thank you to everybody we've all stepped up to the plate this week it's been difficult everybody's been flexible and you know we'll continue to do so until Monday evening it is a huge team just while we've got you let's just get out one or two of the usual safety messages we saw the stories at the weekend that on the first day of practice there were a couple of arrests for people going on the closed roads people need to know when those roads are closed you do not step foot Absolutely, and, and that is the, that's the message. It's quite it's a quite a simple message, but it's absolutely imperative that to all the spectators out there, old new spectators, to everybody involved, guys. Once that road is closed, you do not, I repeat, you do not step foot onto the road or onto the pavement. It's that simple, and if you do, you are liable to be prosecuted because. Well, quite simply, it's against the law. And the key denominator for that is when the road's open car comes around. And obviously, there are a lot of course cars these days and travelling marshals and things. It's the course car with the red flashing light that is the road's open car. Yeah. So once we flag all, once we finish the last session, you will see a travelling marshal with a red bib. He is the last motorcycle on the road. And then once he's gone past, about five, six minutes later, you will see the car with a red flashing light. And it is only then... Only then, when you see that car with a red flashing light, that's when the roads are open, once that car with a red flashing light's gone past. An important message to end on there. That's Clark of the Snaefell Mountain Course, Gary Thompson. As it stands tonight, roads are due to close again at 6 o'clock and reopen no later than 9. Now, Treasury needs to raise public sector workers' pay in line with the UK to be able to attract people to the island, according to one union. It as a ballot for public sector workers is set to close later today following a revised pay offer from the Public Services Commission. Trade unions Prospect and Unite have both made calls for talks to reopen, as indications suggest the offers will be overwhelmingly rejected. Prospects negotiations officer Mick Hewer told Sean Cowper where things stand at the moment. We had an initial offer which we rejected verbally. I had some more discussions and the employer came back and gave us a revised three-year offer of 3.25%, year one, 2.5%, year two and 2% with a caveat on it for year three. And at this point, uh, indications are that the offer put to us will be overwhelmingly rejected. As of lunchtime on Monday, we've had a significant return rate. Uh, 73% of those that had responded up to that point had rejected the offer with 27% accepting. And I don't think that that figure will change very much when we get the, the final result. Do you feel like the PSC is acknowledging those concerns? Personally, no. I think that we could have a number of meetings scheduled in. Certainly there's, there's large gaps between us uh, a journey of one meeting and have, having another. And I think that the, the issue is of significance to all of our members. And I think that the PSC needs to schedule in more meetings more urgently. And we've called for them to come to us before the middle of September with a response and a revised offer. I have been informed that the PSC aren't due to meet until I think it's the end of September. Now you said you did warn the PSC that this offer is likely to be rejected. What do you think your members would be looking for? What offer would be acceptable? I think now that they'll be looking to match the, the offers that we're seeing in the public services across, off, off the island, uh, and they're in the region of 5.5%. Where would the money come from for that? Uh, well, I think the Treasury need to give some serious consideration as to where, where they're going to find the, uh, the, the finances. They, they have found money in the past when we've been offered lower inflationary pay awards. They've generally told us that there's no more money in the pot, there's no more money in the pot, and then, lo and behold, they have found the finances. Then I think they need to do that now. There's going to be a knock-on effect. If we're wanting to encourage people to move to the Isle of Man, to remain on the Isle of Man and to work in our public services, then we need to be offering them pay which is comparable, if not better, than what our uh, colleagues are earning in the UK.
Now, assuming that the result of this ballot is that the offer is rejected, what would happen next? We would go back and have another round of talks as a minimum with the employer. We don't want to be jumping into anything. Obviously, we need to give the employer time to consider a revised offer. Hence, I've given them the heads up this week that the offer is likely to be rejected. So we'll, we, we would enter into further negotiations. That's Mick Hewer, Negotiations Officer for the Prospect Union, speaking to Sean there. Now, a local business says tourist accommodation across the island can bring benefits to the Manx economy and support island communities. It comes after confirmation that Port Erin commissioners will no longer support planning applications for residential properties granted tourism use. Managing Director of Island Escapes, John Keggin, says he doesn't believe a blanket rule is necessary. Tourism is, is a key part of our economy and there's certain parts of the island that have been built on tourism and the community is very much part of that so it creates jobs for the community. A property that's being used rather than lying empty and has people staying in it and spending money is really generating good benefits for the economy. That's money that's coming from somewhere else being spent on our island within our community. One of the big concerns we have is the sheer volume of dormant and vacant properties there are on the island. I think government figures are showing there's over 5,600 vacant properties. Tourism properties make up a tiny proportion of that. And actually what they do for the local economy is really great because they're actually being occupied by people who are actually contributing to the local economy, helping businesses and community thrive. Where we've got issues is we've got probably a far, far more empty properties in in our towns and villages that are not being used for anything. And I think what would be great would be for us to try and get those properties either being let out for tourist use or we have residents living in them. Out of all the vacant properties that are out there, there's different circumstances which lead to, to them being empty. What they need to do is they need to look at the rate system and maybe that needs to be reformed to consider why a property is vacant and to encourage them to have it occupied. Managing Director of Island Escapes, John Keggin, speaking there. The time now at 17 minutes past five. We'll have a look at the business news today. The Isle of Man's consumer inflation rate fell by a whole percentage point last month, returning it to its lowest level since April 2021. Christian Jones has the details. The rate at which prices are rising stands at 2%, down from 3 in June. Restaurants and hotels exhibit the largest increase in a 12-month period by 7.1%. Education follows, having risen 6.5%. And alcohol and tobacco is the third largest contributor at 5.5%. Rent, tea, preschool fees and driving lessons are among the largest movers over the past year. Meanwhile, gas, multivitamin tablets, electrical alliances and air travel see the biggest decreases. Over a one-month period, transport is seeing the highest increase at 2.7%, while restaurants and hotels experience deflation of 1.2% over the same period. Christian Jones, thank you. Now, the latest stock market report from Ramsey Crookall. UK stocks advanced as higher oil prices lifted energy stocks and investors digested Fed, digested Fed Chair Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole speech. US stocks rebounded as highly anticipated remarks by Mr Powell have seemingly confirmed expectations that the central bank is prepared to begin lowering interest rates. The dollar turned lower as investors weighed the prospects of the Bank of Japan continuing to raise interest rates. Oil prices rose to extend gains from the previous session due to expectations of an imminent interest rate cut by the US Federal Reserve. And gold prices climbed as the dollar and treasury yields retreated. Markets at the close, the FTSE 100 up 0.52% to 8,331. The DAX up 0.78% to 18,638. A short time ago, the Dow Jones up 1.2% to 41,200. The S&P 500 up 1.11% to 5,632. And the Nasdaq up 1.37% to 17,860. Gold up 1.26% to $2,516 and a barrel of Brent oil up 2.2% to $78.84. I'm running late again. Do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog basket. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Crook all later? Oh, um, no, of, of course not. Um, 5pm, is it? Quarter to three. I'll be there. 
Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision, considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. Oh. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Well, main thing to be aware of on the roads this evening is, of course, the upcoming closure of the TT course, as this evening's Manx Grand Prix session is due to get away in just over an hour's time. Roads around the course will close at 6 o'clock and are due to reopen no later than 9. If there are any last-minute changes, as indeed there was yesterday, we'll let you know. Now, no major issues to report from the airport, most flights getting in and out on time today. A bit of a delay to the EasyJet Manchester flights this hour, but otherwise the evening's arrivals and departures on schedule. Now on the sailings, a slightly different story. For the second day in a row, the Mananan had difficulty at the Liverpool ferry terminal due to what the steam packet called the unsafe motion of the link span relative to the vessel. Its departure was held up and she eventually left at a quarter to four and is due back into Douglas at half past six. This evening's Liverpool crossings have been delayed as a result. Meanwhile, the quarter past two Manxman sailing from Hesham this afternoon was also heavily delayed, not leaving Lancashire until gone four o'clock. She's due back into Douglas tonight at 10 to 8. That's had a knock-on effect on the 7.45 p.m. departure, which is now estimated to leave Douglas at around half past nine. You can find all the latest sailing information at steampacket.com. Ask how you can spread the cost interest-free at Keyside. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. And it's 21 minutes past five. Primary care services on the Isle of Man have been able, in the most part, to operate business as usual during the Manx Grand Prix. That's according to Primary Care Director Dr. Dr. John Snelling. He's responsible for 22 different teams who deliver health services outside the hospital. For us uh, in in primary care, we really hold up the business as usual uh, on the island. Obviously, many people can't get into the hospital and many people will stay away uh, during um, TT and MGP. Uh, But of course, they still need their prescriptions. They still get poorly. They they, they need to see the doctors. They need to see the dentists and so forth. So we, we... continue to manage all of that in tt fortnight of course um the the particular challenge is an awful lot more people on the island so an awful lot more people who perhaps don't know the system may not even know uh the the uk system if they're coming from abroad uh, and that creates certain challenges interestingly um we don't get a huge increase in workload um i i would say in all credit to uh to the population coming across they seem to be pretty self-sufficient they look after themselves fairly well i think they look after each other pretty well too um, and so we don't see uh, mathematically, you know, if we're having tens of thousands of extra people across, you'd expect us to be seeing X number yeah, of people of uh, coming through the doors. Um, and uh, I don't think actually we do see that. And, and as I say, I think that's credit to them in terms of looking after themselves and each other really well. We do obviously have some uh, extras coming through the door and we have a lot of telephone queries and that sort of thing. Um, the challenges, I think, for, for primary care and community care come much more in terms of uh, the fact that we are by our very nature mobile uh, and are having to visit people in their homes um, and uh, that can be more of a challenge when the roads are closed but over the years we've become quite good at it and adapting and uh, again most of the time I hope um, the feedback would be uh, as we believe it to be which is that the services are not adversely affected in any significant way. That's Primary Care Director Dr John Snelling there. Now, FC Isle of Man's manager says he expects a tough weekend as his side faced two games in three days away from home in the NWCFL Premier Division. Paul Jones's men first travelled to Lancashire on Saturday to take on playoff hopefuls Charnock Richard FC with kickoff at Mossy Park scheduled for three o'clock. The Manx side will then be back in action on Bank Holiday Monday to take on newly promoted Stockport Town FC, which is set to take place at Stockport Sports Village with kickoff at 1 p.m. The Ravens recently came from behind to beat Litherland Remica 2-1 last weekend. 
Paul Jones has been looking ahead to the next few days. The logistics of doing what we're trying to do, and this has been like this from day one, you know, it's, it's tough, it's hard. Mm. Like to, to win games at this level of football, you know, we should be the underdogs every game we play because of the, the challenges that we've got. Now, the players are, are, are good and, and, and we back ourselves as coaches and managers to, to change that dynamic and, and, and do really well just despite the challenges that we have, but they're real and, you know, we can either embrace them and, and find a way around them or we can whinge about it and mm. be victims and I'm never going to be a victim you know so I, I think it is part of the challenge I think you know we've shown with you know in previous seasons where we've played back to back that we can do it our players have experiences of playing in the island games where you're playing back to back day to day um, so it's it's doable it, it's just a bit harder mm. and there's a bit of an ownership on everybody to make sure you recover well in between and you eat well and you sleep well and um, you look after yourself so you can be at your best and as a manager I've got a you know in the moment and when I see them either get on the boat or get to the ground or warming up making sure that we utilize the group as well as we can to keep your best players on the pitch as long as you can and um, but also use the other players who are excellent to to impact the game and I think we're getting better at making those sort of decisions and and that'll be key really to the weekend is getting the right players on the pitch at the right time to make an impact certainly second half of Saturday and all game on Monday FC Isle of Man manager Paul Jones and we'll bring you the results from those games over the weekend. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. And it's 26 minutes past five now, so let's get today's sporting news with Darren Timpson. Fast am I. Fast am I. After a series of delays, we finally saw motorbike action in the Manx Grand Prix this afternoon. Dominic Herbertson was in a class of his own on the mountain course as he topped the standings with a lap time of 18 minutes and 27.892 seconds with a speed of 122.6 miles per hour. Herbertson's best lap was 18.6 seconds faster than next best Derek Shields who managed a time of 18 minutes and 46.58 seconds. On to football, the Isle of Man women's national football team is currently taking on the Isle of Wight in the inaugural Cherry Godfrey Cup. Jersey, who are hosting the competition, take on Guernsey in the following game at 8pm this evening, with the winners of those two fixtures will then face off in the final at 3pm on Saturday, whilst the losers will take part in a third-fourth playoff at the earlier time of 10am that morning. Next, another island side is currently in action as the Isle of Man women's national cricket team has set Serbia a target of 268 in the T20 International Valletta Cup. Lucy Barnett was top scorer of the side as she made 88 of 50 balls, while Caitlin Henry contributed to 71 of 45 balls. The Manx side lost to Marylebone Cricket Club yesterday as the Lord's Cricket side won the eight balls with one with eight balls remaining. Lastly, in cycling, a young competitor Ralph Holden of Trinity Rating was in Belgium to compete at the Driving Cure over Yeiser. Unfortunately, the Manxman did not finish the one-day event alongside five of his Trinity teammates. Lastly, in golf, and Anna Dawson has completed day two of the Lady Slovak Golf Open. Dawson ended round two in 10th position as and two, two over par. She'll be back on the course tomorrow to contest the final day. Darren Timpson, Guru Mayad and great pronunciation there. And that's it from Update Tonight. Do remember, you can contact us in the Manx Radio newsroom anytime by email newsroom at manxradio.com. Coming up next, Kim Quines here with Greatest Hits. Have, hope you have a great bank holiday weekend. Updates will be back at the same time on Tuesday.